and uh, at least me and you came out with some profits. So that was uh, correct. That that was very nice. Real quick, um, you see the success of Rashawn Gary in the draft. Nick Bosa, Noah Fant, Greedy Williams, Nikhil Harry from holding out in their bowl games. Uh, do you, do you see this trend even getting worse because it's it's kind of been progressing over the years? I, uh, well, I think the only way it can ultimately get worse is if someone begins to say, you know what, I'm not going to play in a, a college football playoff game. Uh, we, we saw it, we've seen it cross over now to some of the New Year's six games. Uh, the, the Rose Bowl, I mean, we, we saw uh, Taylor Rapp was injured in that game and, and, and didn't play. But and now the, like the next barrier would be the playoff. If someone sits out a playoff game, then we've got a, uh, then we have a, a real big issue, uh, and you're really jeopardizing your team and, uh, costing your, potentially costing yourself and the team a chance to win a, uh, a national championship. So like I said, I, do I like it? No, I don't. Do I understand it? Yes, I do. And hopefully we can, uh, continue to see these playoff games and, and title games played with, uh, the best players and on the biggest and brightest spotlights and if players, uh, feel the need to, to hold out and sit down and say, you know what, uh, our, our team goals fell short this year, and uh, as a result, uh, I don't want to risk my future. Uh, by more power to them. I, I, I don't. I don't have to agree with it, but I can totally uh, respect that they have a, a life and a family that they need to take care of. And I absolutely agree with that as well. But what I think college football can do, and the good thing, the AAF is not exactly turning out, and there's no minor league system that we should be afraid of for football. Maybe basketball might be a different story with the summer leagues and things like that, But and, and the draft, obviously, going back to high school. But with football, maybe a better insurance policy that covers a much larger uh, couple years of their first uh you know, getting into the draft, maybe the college mm-hmm. football can do that because of all the money there. I've always been a proponent for giving the athletes something, some spending money, take girls on dates, whatever, let them use the name. Uh, that's a whole nother conversation, but I think it needs to be done to keep the integrity of what we're watching. And, uh, and, right. and, and we don't like chaos. We, we want to be right about our teams before the season even starts. So uh, 100% agreement to that. Well, let's move on to what's important for this week weekend the 2019 Kentucky Derby my man uh, let's get right into it first with uh, the big question we saw justify last year win the triple crown looking at this field uh, it's at plus 450 that there will be a, a, a triple crown winner if you go on the no it's around minus 550 uh, do you think do you see another uh, triple crown winner happening this year I could see it um, and I would not the way I would play it is I would not play just that plus 450 on the yes prop. Uh, I think you can get with the favorite in this race likely going to be four, four, four and a half to one, nine to two. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think you could potentially play uh, a game winner. You could potentially play improbable, um, maybe road three. You could play two or three of these horses that are uh, nine to two, five to one. Play it, play them for it for a healthy amount to win. And if one of them wins, you just continue to roll it over uh, in the practice when they'll, they'll be running against a, uh, a shorter field, and you'll probably get uh, a little less than even money back on your return, and then you roll it over again into Belmont. I think you're probably better off coming out ahead uh, in, the, in the long run on, on that way than you are uh, just taking uh, a blanket plus 450 when you're, when, you, when you're just locked in hoping one horse does. I think if you try and isolate a couple of horses that can do it and roll over the individual profits, you could probably uh, come out a little bit ahead. Absolutely. I mean, what the bear is talking about is a mechanical parlay or a money line rollover, we like to call it, uh, meaning you take uh, your winnings on the first race, reinvest the winnings and the initial bet on the second race and do the same for the third race. And you get paid way more. As a matter of fact, plus 450 is terrible. You, that's the odds you get for the winner yeah, of the exactly. Kentucky yeah. Derby right now. So uh, 100%. I think that almost tells you, too, uh, maybe there is value in the minus 550. We got a pretty tough race, but uh, uh, we'll see what happens here. Do not Whatever you do, do not take the plus 450 is what Chris is yeah, trying no, to say. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Last year, I remember um, you talking about a horse that a lot of people were including in their exotic plays. You were the one person that said, I don't think this horse is worth it. His name was Mendelssohn. I remember you calling this correctly, and I and I give you 100% props for doing this. Not only did he not go into the top four, he, he, sh- he was straight last 
you know? Yeah. And uh, I, I'd be wondering if there's a prop on that uh, where you could bet that as well. Um, this horse ran in Dubai, uh, is, and you called it right. Is, is running in Dubai on the UAE Derby uh, bad for this race? Uh, it, it's, it, it, uh, no, I don't think it is because uh, that, that Dubai World Cup card is such a great card internationally uh, for the sport of racing. I think the, the issue has been in the past with the UAE Derby winner, they haven't necessarily been horses that have uh, been training in the U.S., have run in the U.S., and they're coming over uh, off of a, a, a grass campaign. They try the, the, the surface uh, in Dubai, and they win, and they, people get excited, oh, this is the one, this is the one, and then they have no idea what to store for them on the first Saturday of May. Last year, Mendelssohn caught up. A sloppy track, just the noise and the environment around him was just too much for him, and uh, it caused him to run poorly. While I don't think the winner of the UAE Derby this year, Pinquet Parfait, uh, can necessarily win the Derby, it wouldn't surprise me if he outran his odds. He's like 30-1 to 1 on the morning line. Mm-hmm. And the reason I say that is he's run uh, in the U.S. as a two-year-old. Last year at Churchill Downs, he ran second uh, in, in, a, in a grade two stakes race. Um, he was a fast closing second that race. So he's shown some form at Churchill Downs. He was based in the U.S. Uh, for trainer Brendan Walsh, who typically has big meets at Churchill Downs. So while I don't think Luke Parfait is a 30 to 1 winner, uh, I certainly would be using him uh, in any trifecta or superfecta wagers that I make, uh, putting him in the third and fourth spots. Gotcha. That's okay. So you, you're definitely higher on him than you were on Madison yes. last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think he's a last place type finisher. Interesting. Well, that's that's a great call. I, I, I wasn't sure if I'd even think about putting him in third or fourth there. So that's very interesting. Um, how do the buyer speed figures uh, look for this race, or is that the one you use? Uh, what What are your thoughts on that? Well, it, it, it's funny. It, it, there's only one horse in the race that has multiple uh, 100 buyers, and that's maximum security. Uh, there have been three, 300 buyers in the race, and he has two of them. But, but he is another, uh, uh, he's kind of a, a, a hit or miss, uh, love him or hate him, depending on the point of view you want to take. Uh, his trainer, Jason Service, is kind of uh, at the center of a controversy at times to times in, in, in the racing world. He's known as a pretty... Uh, aggressive claiming trainer and his horses tend to show dramatic improvement uh, in his bar and leading some people to believe maybe he's fracturing some rules and regulations from time to time. But um, uh, it, it, the, the scratch of Omaha Beach, I think, really affected two people. I think it affected maximum security. The he now will have uh, an easier time with fewer horses pressing him from the outside. And I think the, the scratch affected uh, Roadster positively as well at least from a psychological standpoint of being out of that uh, post-17, which we know has given Bob Baffert trouble before. But, but I, I may not be able to tell you who is going to win the race, but I can promise you uh, that with a quarter of a mile to go after a mile of the race, maximum security will have the lead. Uh, he's going to have an easier time getting to the lead. And what happens after that, uh, I don't know. Uh, the horse initially ran for a $16,000 maiden claiming tag, which tells you that the horse probably had a couple of physical issues early on, and if they lost him, they weren't going to be too upset, but he is undefeated. Mm-hmm. And if you're looking for a little bit of a, a historical trend, a recent trend, rather, uh, each of the last seven Derby winners were undefeated as a, uh, as a three-year-old. Mm-hmm. And there are only three horses in this race that have not lost as a three-year-old. And they are Roadster, Tacitus, and Maximum Security. So uh, take that for what it's worth. And maximum maximum security only ran in the Gulf Stream his whole career. So, correct. Uh, we'll have to see if he can ship. That, 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 that'll be a big question. We've seen uh, more than one horse uh, ship to Churchill for the first time and not really uh, take to the track. But he should like the off going, and he should have a much easier time up front without Omaha Beach in the race. Yeah, he yeah his last. It looks like his top buyers was at one hundred and two. So uh, people are definitely going to be looking at him. Um, we'll see where where his fractions are. Um, if they're really low, you know, it, it's possible he might have the speed out outlast some of these guys. So we'll take a look at that. Which horses are your throwout uh, horses for this race? Well, I should ask you before that. How, how good is this field in general? I mean, Justify was minus 120 or something last year. Uh, the best horse is 4-1. to one. Uh, How good is this field in general? 
I think the field actually is pretty good uh, at the top because I think you can meet, well, I might not, might, might not like a horse like Tacitus to win or, or someone like that. I, I think you can obviously make a good case for him. Um, I, I think Bob Baffert's three horses all will be the top three choices in the race. And, and, and I think people might be underestimating game winner and improbable just a little bit uh, because they didn't win at Oklahoma. They, they had their training disrupted and their race schedule kind of disrupted um, because of the, the track conditions at Santa Anita and the closure. So they had to go to Oklahoma and, and run in some preps. And I'll give them a little bit of an excuse for being for being short there. Uh, I think if you look at improbable, the Blinkers come off in this race, which I love, which tells me that he will be not as close to the pace today and be able to, to, to get a pretty good trip from the inside. It's interesting that uh, if, you, if you're into post positions and numerology, that uh, the horse is breaking for post five the last seven years. You've got two wins and three thirds. So typically that, that area of the track, you're able to find some room and, and work out a trip. And game winner is a horse that won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile uh, at Churchill last year, was undefeated. And I, I think people were potentially looking at him as maybe being a, uh, an undefeated type horse heading to the Derby, but just got beat by Roadster, just got beat by Omaha Beach. And um, th- there's no shame in that for me. It, it, it would be nice to see uh, the owner, the owners of, uh, of Game Winner, Gary and Mary West, they owned, a, they owned that horse for Storing Hope last year, who was basically entered in the Belmont. It's kind of like the lead blocker bodyguard for, uh, for justifying the Belmont. Mm-hmm. They, it would be good to see them kind of rewarded with a derby win or a really good showing on Saturday for uh, – so saying, yeah, you know what, we want, we're going to run our horse in the Belmont. We know what the horse is doing in the race and, and, and kind of help and justify along a little bit to win triple crap. Interesting. So they were a blocker last year, so kind of hoping. Yeah, they, in restoring hope in the Belmont. Yeah, they, he, he had no shot at winning that race. And if you just go back and watch the race, it's, it's pretty apparent with the way that uh, restoring hope ran the race that he was just kind of running interference to try and keep uh, give justify a clean trip which by the way which by, which by the way there's nothing wrong with doing that I mean, it, that's the reason entries run all the time usually you'll, you'll run a, uh, a speed ball up front and someone coming from off the pace and they're, they're in the race to help each other out so you know what it, it's, 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 it's fair is fair that's why you see Baffert so successful in uh, in some of these races. Uh, he he knows the strategy to how to get it done for his horses uh, and how to set the pace so there's no surprises. That's extremely interesting and great information to know. Um, well, the, apparently the field's good. Uh, who's your throwouts for this race? The th- throwouts in terms of opportunity to win or opportunity to support? Opportunity, just throwing them out. You're not playing them in any of your cards. Any uh, of your cards. Tack. Uh, tax, gray magician, um, cutting humor, Heiko, master fenster, uh, long range toddy, and spin off. So those are my and, and Body Express, who just drew in the race with the scratch of Omaha Beach. So those would be the uh, the ones that I'm throwing out and not putting on my ticket. Even though there's a little bit of a, a funny historical uh, parallel for, to this from this year with 2009, when I Want Revenge would have been the favorite in the Derby and scratch due to injury that year resulted in the biggest fluke uh, winner in Derby history in mind that bird who had won a race at Sunland was ridden by Calvin Burrell who was a journeyman jockey at, at, at Churchill came flying up the rail on a sloppy surface and this year you've got uh, number 10 horse cutting humor won the race at Sunland he's another late closer he's got a journeyman Churchill jock and Corey Lannery it's going to be an off track so I, I'm sure there might be some uh, some stabbers out there who see that historical parallel. I wonder if we might be uh, in store for a similar result on Saturday. It's hard to predict chaos like that. It is. Do you, it is. I mean, and, and do you ever even play some of these horses just on some crazy chaos uh, happens? Uh, some no, not not as not not a specific hope, not a specific specific horse. I and mean, a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll just I'll, I'll try and lock in on a horse that I really like and maybe just hit the all button in one of the spots in the trifectas and if something like that does happen then you totally walk out absolutely that would be yeah and that would be a big payoff as everybody knows so exactly uh, that, that's interesting and, and, and another another one of my all-time betting faux pas which i have now since learned from uh, in 2005 uh, i thought a fleet alex was the best horse in the race and he would either win or finish second so i played trifectas a fleet alex with all in second all in third a fleet Alex, I'm sorry, all for first, a fleet Alex in second, and all for third. Mm-hmm. What wound up happening? 
Giacomo wound up winning it like 50 to 1. Closing argument.